Oh, it's happening again. The Hollywood liberals are trying to indoctrinate your kids. This time they're using Japanese animation and Dr. Seuss. In our number one story, Hollywood liberals better watch their backs because Lou Dobbs knows what they're up to. On his Fox Out of Business program last night, Mr. Dobbs took a few minutes to discuss one of the biggest threats facing our children. Cartoons. Hollywood is once again trying to indoctrinate our children. Two new films out this year, plainly with an agenda, plainly demonizing uh, the so-called 1% and espousing the virtue of green energy policies, come what may. The president's liberal friends in Hollywood targeting a younger demographic using animated movies to sell their agenda to children. Look out for that dingmanizing. What has Dobbs so upset? I mean, besides the gas? Disney's The Secret World of Arietti, an animated Japanese film about a family of four people, a four-inch tall people, maybe they're four of them, I don't know, who live beneath the floors and borrow small items from full-size humans in order to survive. And Universal's new adaptation of the Dr. Seuss classic, Lorax, about a creature who protects nature by speaking on behalf of the trees, fighting as Dobbs quoted, Rampant industrialism. Where have we all heard this before? Occupy Wall Street forever trying to pit the mikers against the takers. President Obama repeating that everyone should pay their fair share in dozens of speeches. <laughs> Since uh, his State of the Union address last month. After showing clips from both of the films, Dobbs then played a series of sound bites from the president arguing that every American should pay their fair share, suggesting I suppose there's a link between the two. I'm sure advancing the president's, uh, uh, president's agenda is exactly what was on Mary Norton's mind when she wrote The Borrowers, the book on which Arietti is based, in 1952, and surely what was on Dr. Seuss's mind when he first penned The Lorax in 1971. But Dobbs' guest, radio host Mr. Some Guy You Never Heard Of, has a plan to fight back against this attempt to create what he refers to as acu-toddlers. Here's what I would recommend. If you want to go see the movie, and we all know what the agenda is, buy like huge tubs of popcorn, ram them in your face, they're all made of paper, then just, you know, you crinkle it all up, you throw it on the floor, you walk out, go into the movie theaters, and you actually fight back against this message. That ought to teach a lesson to that movie theater employee who has to clean up your mess. Although there might be a far simpler explanation for Dobbs' fury, he was uh, upset that he hadn't been cast as the Lorax, because I think he's got the look down. Joining me now, Countdown contributor and comedian Maysoon Zaid. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Clearly, conservatives are not fans of the Lorax. Do we think that there are any Dr. Seuss books they, they do like? I've heard that they find the books so pervasive that they have their own version of yeah. Dr. Seuss books, which they prefer. Um, one is called, Oh, the Places You'll Go After We Disappear You Under NDAA. <laughs> There's, Are You My Mother? And if so, please don't abort me. Um, and then my favorite one, One Fish, Two Fish, Transvaginal One Fish, Blue Fish. <laughs> but uh, Romney likes The Grinch. Apparently, that's his favorite book. But he skips over the end because uh. it depresses him. And instead, he imagines the Grinch on the Cayman Islands sipping a virgin pina colada surrounded by all the Who's gifts. And don't forget, Horton here is a stock tip. And Horton here is an <laughs> insider right. trading That's tip. Right. So the list this year from conservatives is the Lorax, the Muppets, and the Girl Scouts. And we laugh, but during the uh, McCarthy era, the baseball team, the Cincinnati Reds, proactively changed their name to the Cincinnati Red Legs mm. so that nobody would think they were communists. <laughs> so, so where this can go from, I mean, have they left subversives out that we should be worried about? Dickens, Bugs Bunny, who's next? Well, I think Elmer Fudd is safe yeah. because that's Newt Ging Gingrich's alter ego. It's like a Clark Kent Superman thing. Yeah. Um, Dora the without Explorer, the Superman, without, by the way. Yeah. Without anything super, mm -hmm. um, more doughy than super. But uh, Dora the Explorer is in big trouble because she was born and raised in America, but Lou Dobbs believes she's a Mexican alien because she insists on speaking Spanish in public. She's asking to get deported. Fat Albert's safe. They don't save blah people. Did you, did you know, by the way, it's a good time to mention this. Did you know the name of, of, of Lou Dobbs' wife? Her maiden name, because oh, I used God, to work no. with her at CNN. What's her you name? want to? Uh, if anybody at home doesn't understand this, this will explain everything to you. She's Debbie Segura Dobbs. Oh my God! Yeah, exactly. All right, it's a very deep, deep waters what we're entering into here. This is a. Uh, some of the comments are not necessarily questioning climate change, but they're more like a like a real hostile mm -hmm. uh, environment about the environment. It, it's it's 
one step further, don't you think, than it usually is? Don't they usually stop at some point? Now they're basically saying real science, as Santorum said the other day, allows us to flatten the earth and pave everything over and utilize all this stuff we've been given. I said this months ago when Herman Cain was still pretending to be relevant. <laughs> The 2012 GOP slogan is, yes, we hate. <laughs> These are people who are taking tips from Franklin Graham, the hateful cracker. They've taken hate to a new level. Who hates Dr. Seuss? Green Eggs and Ham, not my favorite book, but the hate towards Dr. Seuss is ridiculous. And I think it's insane that Lou Dobbs is blaming the Lorax and its mission on President Obama. How is President Obama responsible when at the time that book was written, he was a 10-year-old old kid swigging off some monkey bars at a madrasa in Kenya. It's, he had nothing a, to do with that book. Keep one story together and just, if it doesn't fit the timeline, do not come and tell me he wasn't born in this country, yet he influenced both a book that was written nine years before his birth and this, you know, Lorax story from 1971. Exactly. And this, this reference to Occu toddlers, this is the giveaway to it. It's this desperate attempt to stand at the ocean and not just push the tide back, but make sure nobody ever sees the tide again, right? It's the future they're worried about. It also makes it clear that they have no idea what Occupy stands for. First of all, I think he's confusing it with toddlers and tiaras. <laughs> and they don't understand what Occupy is trying to do is actually ensure a future for these kids that you're trying to disenfranchise. Mm -hmm. And if they occupy anything, it should be a corner because Rick Santorum's right. Satan is in America and he's wearing a sweater vest. Countdown contributor Mason Zaid. As always, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. So nice to be back. Thank you. Well, that's countdown for this, the 413th day since John Boehner and the Republicans took the House, thus 413 days in which the Republicans have failed to pass a jobs bill of any kind. Congratulations on getting through another day of this crap. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.